name is Jennifer Cross, and I'm a communication specialist with Ducks Unlimited. For those of you who don't know, know Ducks Unlimited, we are a conservation organization, and we focus on waterfowl and their habitats all throughout North America because waterfowl are migratory, right? So they travel um, from breeding grounds up north to in North Dakota and Canada to <clears throat> their wintering grounds in the south in places like Mississippi, Texas, and Louisiana. So uh, if you don't know what conservation means, conservation is um, making sure that we have the waterfowl habitats that we, around that we need today, but also those habitats, um, keeping those habitats on the ground for generations to come. So years and years down the line. So, you know, if I have this water jug and this water has to last me a week, <clears throat> am I gonna drink it all today? No, I'm going to conserve it, right? I'm going to drink a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow, and a little bit the next day until the end of the week. So that's what we're making sure waterfowl habitats and wetlands on the ground are there for today and then tomorrow, the next day, the next day, so that when I have grandkids and when you all have grandkids, those resources will be around to help those people. So I'm going to talk to you today about wetlands and specifically what wetlands do for us as people. But let's talk about what a wetland is actually first. So there's three things that biologists use to classify wetlands. Water is number one, right? It's in, it's in the name, wetland. Number two is the vegetation. So there's special plants that really like to be in wetland environments. So they like their, so they're like their roots wet and they like wet soil. So uh, those are the plants. So wet water, vegetation, and thirdly, the soils. So the soils and wetlands, they like to be wet and they like to soak up water. So those are the three things that biologists use to classify wetlands. Um, there's all kinds of creatures that use wetlands. There's over 500 species of wildlife that depend on wetlands in North America. We could go down the list. Of course, there's ducks and geese, but there's also raccoons and badgers and deer bear, alligators, all, around, all across North America, there's tons of animals that use wetlands and depend on them. There's wetlands on every continent on Earth, including Antarctica, where there's a lot of frozen water, there's wetlands there for sure. So, that being said, wetlands do three things for people, and I want you to remember this. So, number one, they act like a sponge. Now what do sponges do? They soak up water. So like I, like I said about the wetland soils, they really like to be wet and absorb water. And that's that sponge action that wetlands perform help keep our communities safe from flooding. And number two, they act like a filter. What does a filter do? A filter lets the bad, keeps the bad stuff out and lets the good stuff go through, right? So wetlands help keep our lakes, rivers, and streams and our groundwater clean from pollution and other excess nutrients that don't need to be in our drinking water or in our lakes, rivers, and streams. Uh, number three, they help replenish our groundwater. So the soils in some wetlands are permeable, which means that water can drip through them and into our groundwater. So whether you have an aquifer that needs replenishing or groundwater supplies, that's what wetlands do. Wetlands help make sure that that water is plentiful. So I'm going to show you this demonstration uh, about um, a couple towns to show you how wetlands help keep our community safe from flooding. So what I've got here is I've got A, a Town and I've got B Town. And when they built A Town, they decided to fill uh, to fill in their wetlands and build their houses right up to their lake's edge. So this is their lake right here, and they've got their houses right up there. When they built B Town here, they like they like their wetlands. They said, "We're going to keep our wetlands," and that's what these sponges represent. Remember how I said wetlands act like a sponge? So that's what these are here. These are their um, their wetlands. So. I'm going to make it rain on both of these towns, and then we're just going to see what happens to each one. I bet you can predict which one is going to get flooded and which one isn't. I don't want my wetlands to float away. Okay, so 
if you can see the water line right here, right up to the lake here, and some of these houses probably have wet basements and some flooding going on in their, in their, um, um, and some flooding going on in their backyards. This road right here is in danger of flooding and being flooded out. Um, whereas in B-Town here, are their houses flooded? Can you see where the water line is here? They're not. So these houses were safe. Their wetlands protected them. But in uh, A-Town, they're, they're having some trouble here. So especially if they get any wind or wave action on their, on their lake or water, some of these houses that are further up that didn't get um, flooded in the initial flooding event are now getting flooded. So this is how wetlands help keep our safe, communities safe from flooding. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you a demonstration that will show you how our wetlands help keep pollution out. So I've got, this side here is our paved parking lot or our bare ground part, uh, part of land. And this right here is our wetland side. So all these little pegs here represent the plants and the soil in the wetland. And this down here, this trough down here, this is our river, or it can be a lake, or it can be our groundwater supplies, our aquifer, um, any water source that we want to keep clean. All right, so um, I've got two helpers here. Can you hold your boards there, please? Okay, so I've got marbles in here, and the clear marbles represent water. These bigger marbles here, they represent, oh, they, these marbles here, the bigger marbles represent our pollution. Um, or, you know, it, so it can be anything from actual dirt and trash to something like excess nutrients or oil or gas from like a car or something. Stuff that we don't want in our water. All right. So you can kind of probably guess what's going to happen when we let these marbles go from our paved parking lot side versus our wetland side. So I'm going to um, ask my helpers, I'm going to count to three, and you two can lift it up on the count of three. Ready? One, two, three. that it blocked our pollution, or all of our pollution got stuck. But on our paved parking lot side, did the pollution get stuck? No, it all went down into our river down here. That's where this came from, this down here. So you can also see on our wetland side how it blocked off some of that water too. It protected our drinking water source or our lake here from getting too much water at, at one time. So. What happens when we have a lot of water hit our river in a short amount of time? It causes flooding, right? So if you pile up all these marbles over on one side here, they can hop the bank and get some of the and flood some of the houses or maybe our farm ground that's on the other side. So by holding back water, by slowing it down as it did in our wetland too, it helps keep our community safe from flooding. And we've also got this filtering property of our wetland here that's keeping the pollution out. Whereas we didn't get that filter going on our paid parking lot side. So we've talked about how wetlands help keep our communities safe from flooding. And we've also talked about how um, wetlands help keep our drinking waters clean and our lakes, rivers, and streams clean and our groundwater clean. So now I'm going to show you a demonstration about how wetlands replenish our groundwater supplies. Okay, so I've got two representations here. I've got this side. This is our paved parking lot side. It's, um, it's, a, it's just a block of cement right there. And then down here, this is our groundwater right here. So that's our groundwater bucket right there. And then we've got our river right here, or you know, it could be some other pond or lake. And on this side, what's this? It's a sponge, but what do sponges represent? Wetlands, right? So I've got my wetland side right here. So I'm gonna stuff this wetland in here. And again, I've got my groundwater right here, my groundwater bucket. 
And then this is our river right here. Okay, so we're gonna make it rain on both of these. And what do we think is gonna happen to our water that hits our paved parking lot side? Where's it gonna go? Well, we'll find out when we make it rain on these. Okay, and what about our wetland side? Can you guess where that water is gonna go? Well, we'll make it rain on these and we'll find out. So, okay, helpers, go ahead and make it rain on here. Go ahead and pour it in, yep, go for it. Yes, the other cup too. Yep, both cups. So can we can everybody see how our water is working here? Where's our water going on our wetland side? Can you see it going down into our groundwater here? On the river, you can see it. So the water on our wetland side is passing through our wetland and going down into our groundwater. So this could be uh, our Ogallala Aquifer that supports Nebraska and Colorado, the water sources there. Or it could be other groundwater supplies that we tap into that we have a well that um, helps irrigate our farm ground or brings water into our homes for drinking and showering and things like that. What happened on our big parking lot side? Where did all that water go? Did any of it go into the groundwater? No, none of it went into the groundwater. It all went right here into our river. Now, is that water that came off of our parking lot that went into the river, is that water clean? No, it didn't really pass through any filters. So the water that, came, that ends up in our groundwater that goes through a wetland is clean because our wetland is filtering out any of those pollutants and replenishing our groundwater supplies. But if we have a piece of property here where the water can't pass through, we're not going to get any water replenishment in our groundwater supply. And then all that water is going to end up in our river or a, a lake where we don't want it, right? We don't want all that yucky stuff in there. Now, we're humans and we build things to support our life and our lifestyles. We have to have parking lots for Walmarts and malls and we have to have other things that we do to the ground that may not be the best for protecting our water resources, but we're humans so sometimes we cause problems but we can fix those too. So how might we fix this problem of this water coming off of this, say it's a paved parking lot, and running into our river. What might we do to do that, to fix that, to clean that water out before it hits our river? Well, there's a couple things we can do. We could divert the water from the paved parking lot and run it through some kind of water purification system before it hits the river or drinking water resources. Or we might be able to build a wetland, depending on if there's room right here between the river and the parking lot. Ducks Unlimited employs lots of wetland engineers and biologists that can design and, and fix this sort of thing. So we can come along and say, hey, we've got a problem here. We've got this drinking water resource that's getting polluted from this paved parking lot. Let's see if we can build a wetland in between. So by the time that water hits the river or a drinking water resource, it's clean. So I want to thank you for listening today to my presentation about wetlands. The three things that I want you to go home with today are about wetlands and how they help people. So number one, they act like a sponge and they help keep our community safe from flooding. Number two, they act like a filter and they help filter out water that's going into our lakes, rivers, and streams and our drinking water supply. So wetlands help keep all those water resources clean. And number three, they help replenish groundwater supplies. So if you have important groundwater dependency in communities and especially in aquifers like the Ogallala Aquifer, and you need to make sure that that water in there is plentiful and clean, wetlands are your friend to help you do that too. So again, my name is Jennifer Cross. I'm with Ducks Unlimited and I really appreciate your time. I have an activity for you to do to go along with this. I'm going to have you guys build your own wetland and groundwater system. So hopefully you're excited about that.